Hi, I'm Karen McNeil, and this is Winespeed.com's People to Know, insider interviews with the most fascinating and important people in the wine business. And today we're here with Francoise Pechon, who is the consulting winemaker for Accendo, for Vine Hill Ranch, and for Cornell, and the former winemaker for Araujo Estates here in the Napa Valley. Welcome. Thank you, Karen. So, Francoise, how old were you when you had your first glass of wine, and who gave it to you? This is embarrassing. I think I was like four or five years old. Oh, I thought you were going to say and, you were 40. Uh, no, okay. and my parents used to have these formal dinner parties, and I was in the back, and I emptied out all the glasses. So I don't remember it for obvious reasons. <laughs> But that was my first taste of wine. Wonderful. So you spent your early years in Bordeaux at Chateau Aubryon. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine that it wasn't always easy. What was the what were the toughest parts of those years? Um, well, first being able to work at a first growth was just amazing. Mm. So I think the toughest was that I was consigned to the lab which was great, you know, that was my skill set, but I really wanted to be in the cellar. Mm -hmm. And the crew there was older, and they kept saying, why do you want to be in the cellar? Why don't you want to wear your lab coat and be in this comfortable laboratory environment? Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit tough, and then I won their hearts. So I got to work in the cellar, but they thought, why, why go here? It's not professional. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, it, do you think it would be that way today? It's a younger crowd yeah. now, yeah. Um, but the older generation, you have to show them respect. Um, in the 40s, women weren't allowed in wineries or in dairies or at the butcher, you know, so it, culturally it was just very different. Yes, yes. Yeah, it didn't offend me. I respected it. Right. Yeah. Well, and you were the winemaker for Araujo Estate for a long time, and the Araujos, of course, much of the fame of their wine was based on the well-known vineyard in Napa Valley, mm -hmm. the Isley Vineyard. What was it like working with that vineyard? That I vineyard mean, I think it's so renowned. It's a jewel. It's such a storied vineyard, mm -hmm. um, and it'll always have such a special place in my heart. It's where... Um, I spent the most time in my career. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have 22 years somewhere else. I doubt it. Yeah. I might be on a walker, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just the most beautiful little vineyard. Do you feel like you, when you're a winemaker, can you stand in a vineyard like that and really feel its, its specialness? I think so. If you look around at the contours, at just the site and how things grow, yeah, mm. you know you're in a great place. That's, uh, I didn't know it at the time. I was a little bit too young, but mm -hmm. it grew on me. Yeah. That's kind of chilling in a good way, right? Yeah. And the wines from that vineyard, or any great vineyard in Napa Valley, they're so distinctive. And I remember being in a tasting group, and one of my colleagues said, how do you do it? How do you always make it taste like that? It's like it's nothing I'm doing. It's the vineyard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then more recently, you've teamed up with your friend, uh, Lisa Drinkwood, uh -huh. and uh, created your own wine, Drinkwood right. Pechon. Drinkwood right? Pechon. Which is, uh, sounds like a character out of Spongebob, but I know it's a, <laughs> an important yeah. Cabernet. Um, yeah. and, but it has the funniest name. Um, right. Entre deux. Entre deux mer. Mer, mer spelled M E R E S. Right. Between mothers. two mothers. Between so two mothers. It was a play on words. I can't take credit for it. Our good friend Lance Winters, who's the distiller at St. George Spirits, he said, um, Well, why don't you just call it Entre deux mer? And it's like, brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Well, what's the wine like? So we've been um, at this for 20 years now. We wow. started in 2000, and it was just what we would call an after school project. So while we were looking at our little girls doing ballet, you know, kind of bored, um, we thought, wouldn't it be fun to make a wine of our own? Um, she was working with her husband at Barron's family, but missed having her own thing. Like She had a restaurant mm -hmm. in Arcata. And so we started with just a ton of fruit from Fortuna Vineyard, and then two tons. And it's, it's become this fun project mm -hmm. where when it doesn't become fun anymore, we'll give it up. But it was a chance for our kids to get in, um, involved as well. Yeah. They were there punching down and doing bricks and power washing. And it was just a very <laughs> fun family affair. 
Oh, yeah. that's really what a wonderful story. Yeah. So because you consult with um, so many top wineries and also because you've worked n not only your winery but for other top wineries, what, what character trait do you think you possess that has most led to your success? Hmm. Well, I think I've been incredibly fortunate to work with certain vineyards, Isley for one, Vine Hill Ranch, now Cornell. I mean, they're incredible sites. Mm. So whether that's lucky or I just said yes to the perfect opportunity. But um, wine style wise, I think that the properties need to speak for themselves. Mm. And in order to do that, winemaking needs to have an element of modesty to it. An element of modesty? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Explain that a little bit. I mean, I, I don't hear so many winemakers talk about modesty. I think when you respect the land and the fruit, um, there's not, I don't have a need to put my stamp on it. Mm. It's the stamp of the property. And if you are a little greedy in ripeness or in how you farm, how you thin, I think there's a sameness that can happen. Mm. So in respecting the land, whether you call it modesty or restraint, but mm -hmm. just to pull back and let the vineyard speak. Mm. Otherwise, they all taste the same. Otherwise, they do yeah. all taste the same. <laughs> what, what um, I mean, I know you've done how many vintages now? Thir 30? Ooh, I'm on my 34th, I think. 34? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I what know, I yeah. know. I'm on the other side where people are saying, Oh, with your many years of experience. And it's funny when all of a sudden you get to the other side. I wasn't yeah. quite ready for that. No, me either. Yeah. Um, People say, what was 74 like? It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't legal then. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm sure um, you, you are in a position sometimes to give younger winemakers advice, especially young women winemakers. Mm -hmm. What sort of advice do you give them? Hmm outside of just being thoughtful and intentional, but to really coax out the, the qualities in the wine from, from that spot, mm -hmm. from that vineyard. Mm -hmm. To get to know the vineyard. So I'm only working with estate vineyards right, right. now or family owned properties. And it's a lot easier to work with those because you get to know a property, you get to know the attributes and you focus on those and how to coax them out. How do you get to know a property, though? Does it come from walking it and, I don't know, smelling every, the every air? Every step of the way, yeah. Just all of that stuff. Every step of the way. And mm. most of these lots, like at Cornell, we have over 20 different blocks. And mm. so those are all fermented separately. The Vine mm. Hill is the same. Right. Um, ferment every lot separately, and you get to know them and what they're about. And then you, you let them speak. Mm. Yeah, so blending within an estate property is really fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's like, huh. Is it ever predictive? I mean, do you no, ever? No, that's the it's exciting not. part of it. Ah. Yeah, a little bit. You get to know them. Right, right. So, hmm. tools right. in the toolbox. Exactly. So, tell us something um, that would surprise people to, to know about you. Hmm. You're not like a secret gambler or something no, in Las Vegas. No, I'm um, not very social. You're not I, very no, social. Pretty quiet at home. Hmm. I like reading and music and the arts. Right. So I don't go to a lot of wine tastings or I just need to break out a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that is surprising because many winemakers really do these days have to be on something of a social circuit yeah. in a way. Yeah, but I've been so fortunate in um, starting my career at Isley Vineyard. The Arajos allowed me to work part time and I've only been production based. Mm. So I was spoiled in that respect. I don't have to go on sales trips or... Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's a pretty sweet position to be in when yes. it's just production. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Francoise. Thank and you, Karen. more of our interview with Francoise Pechon um, is found at winespeed.com's People to Know. Check it out. I'm sure you'll really want to read it.